Today we're going to start our three-part series of how to build a fence. Part one, we're going to focus on putting the posts in and setting the foundation for our fence. First things first, we got to mark out our yard. Marking out the length of the yard will allow us to divide the number of posts that are required to actually build the fence. You want to focus on a number between the posts, center to center, being 96 inches or less. This way you can work with 8 foot lumber. With the string line in place, we can now mark the increments between the posts. If you're working with a fence that has existing holes, you want to offset the holes to go between the old holes. That way you're not reusing the same ones. Once the location is secured for where the posts are going to go, we simply spray an X. That way we don't have to worry about putting a marker in there, like a stake or something of that nature, that we have to remove before the auger hits it. So now we're going to use a bobcat to drill out these holes. Save the manual labor of post digging with a hand shovel. So after the holes are dug out with a bobcat, what we want to look at is hand digging to make sure we get to the depth that's required. Your area, wherever you live, you should always look into what the frost line is. Our frost line here is between 42 and 48 inches. So what we're trying to do is achieve a 48 inch deep hole. By doing this, it's going to stop our post from coming up and down and heaving. When you see a post that's popped out of the ground, it's called heaving. And when that heave happens, it's because the post wasn't dug deep enough. Now what we want to do is get below the frost line so that we can prevent that from happening. And that's how we have a good foundation to our fence posts. So what I like to do at the bottom of the fence post hole is flare it out. It's kind of this shape. This way the concrete will spread out and the earth puts more compaction on top of that part of the concrete. So if you ever think about the heaving ever happening, it's going to resist it that much more. So then the concrete will bank up against the earth that's undisturbed and that will hold the post down. I mentioned frost line before, so what we're trying to achieve is anything over 42 inches. 48, ideal. So I'm going to take a measure before we drop the next post in just to make sure we're there. So you can see 48 is just above grade, so we would call this a good hole, and now we're going to drop the post in. So if you're in a time crunch, we want to use rapid post set, basically. That's what I've got going here. So as soon as I pour this in here and I add water to it, there's no reason to actually even set up any braces on the post. It's going to set that quickly. So once Mike here sets this post level for me, I'm going to drop the first three bags in immediately and we're just going to run with water and be done. So now we have the dry bag dropped in to the post. You'll notice that we're about 12, maybe 10 inches away from the top of the hole. This is ideal. We don't want concrete to the top of the hole. We want to fill the last minimum six inches down to maybe 10 or 12 at most with soil. This way you get natural compaction of the soil on top and we can build a berm or a peak around the post. That way we create water to flow away from the post, not coming in. The string line is now set in place. What we have is wrapped to the first post and to the last post. This is our dead line that we want to follow. So every post from here on out is going to be set to that line and it's going to be set level. So I'm just pushing the concrete around to pack it into the hole. We want to do this obviously before we add water. That way it's evenly distributed around the base of the post. That way you don't have any issues, again, marking a good foundation. All our posts are in place. We've poured our dry mix concrete into the bases, and now all we're gonna do is make sure everything's still sitting level and add some water and let them set. So, looks pretty good. Come around to this side, just get a double check. As you can see, posts are perfect. Checked all the other ones, this is our last one. Now it's just a matter of adding water. Well that's a wrap. That's part one of our three part series on building a fence, the foundation. Now stay tuned for part two.